Welcome, and thank you for joining the FY 2023 PIH Training Plan webinar. Before we begin, please ensure you have opened the WebEx chat panel by using the associated icon located at the bottom of your screen. Please note that all audio connections are muted at this time. If you require technical assistance, please send a private chat message to the event producer. You're welcome to submit questions throughout today's conference. You may do so by selecting all panelists from the drop-down menu in the chat panel. Type your question in the box provided and hit enter to send. With that, I'll turn things over to Monique Wisdom, Training Officer for Public and Indian Housing. Please go ahead. Thank you, Candice. Good morning, PIH. Thank you for joining me today as we spend a few minutes going over the PIH training plan for FY 2023. Next slide, please. So this plan, we are going to talk about some of the PIH and HUD training opportunities for our employees this year. So these are some of the things that we will be discussing. Okay, next slide, please. The purpose of this plan is to outline the things that we have put in place uh, for PIH and opportunities that are available in HUD to ensure that our staff is receiving high quality professional development opportunities. Okay, next slide, please. So before we take a look at the opportunities for FY23, we're gonna look at some of the things that we, we accomplished in FY22. Okay, next slide, please. In FY22, we spent $1 million in PIH training. This includes both individual and group trainings in our program offices, as well as 67 PIH group training. Um, out of that $1 million, um, at least 65% of our PIH employees were trained. We also held seven learning events, which were our PIH fundamental sessions, as well as a LOPS training that we partnered with OCF, OCFO on. Okay, next slide, please. Here you'll see the 67 MPIH group trainings and how they fell into categories based on both HUD core skills, which is the chart on the left, the blue chart, and the OPM training subtypes, subtype code, excuse me, which is the chart in yellow. So you'll see that we had a mixture of classes that arrayed that um, covered various uh, subjects. Okay, next slide, please. So we um, rolled out our PIH playback a few years ago. And this allows um, you to go back and view previous uh, trainings. And so we have um, two sites where you can access PIH group training information, um, our PIH training site and our PIH um, employee engagement site. And so here are some examples of some of our PIH fundamental topics. Um, as well as some of the internal trainings that we've had over the last few years that you can find um, on our websites. Okay. Next slide, please. So now that we've looked at our FY22 accomplishments and ways to access our past trainings, we're gonna look at some of the opportunities in FY23. Our wildly important goal this year is to make available 1,500 slots. This, this means that we're going to make available a slot for every PIH employee to attend at least one training. Well, we know that some people may attend more, some people may not attend, but making available at least 1,500 allows the opportunity for every PIH employee to attend at least one. Okay, um, next slide, please. So some of our upgrades, some of the things that we've changed and that we're doing for this year are our learning sessions. These learning sessions will be on training policies, 
um, and procedures. This includes today's session, our training plan. Um, we have a kickoff coming up um, in a few weeks, and we have more sessions, learning sessions throughout this year. Okay. Um, we've updated language in our 182s um, to instruct the staff to directly, oh, excuse me. So our learning sessions and then um, our office hours, our office hours, Hours. This is dedicated time for employees to receive assistance before submitting your 182s. So we've gotten questions about market research, um, questions about trainings that are acceptable and not acceptable. So this year we're implementing our office hours, which allows employees to ask questions and to receive assistance um, before completing those SF 182s. Okay. Um, we've also updated language on our 182s um, to instruct staff on directly sending them to your PTCs to ensure that the transcripts are updated timely and correctly and accurately, excuse me. So when you submit your 182, you usually get a um, you get a notification and it tells you what your next steps are. So we've updated that information um, in previous years. I believe it said to send your transcripts to the training um, mailbox. This year, we've updated it to where it identifies your actual training liaison of who you are to send that to. Okay, next slide, please. Okay, so now let's look at some of the PIH group training topics that we plan on offering this year. Okay, next slide, please. Here's just a sneak peek um, of some of our, some of the trainings that we're going to offer. This is, they're categorized based on OPM's um, subtype training codes. And these classes are based off of training surveys. Um, some of the high interest classes from last year and PIH leadership. The, the um, training team is currently conducting market research. So we'll be announcing um, some courses soon for January and February. Okay, next slide, please. Here's some more of our um, sneak peek of some of the other training topics. Okay, next slide, please. This year, we will continue our PIH fundamentals. Um, these, ses these sessions focuses on our PIH um, program offices, our initiatives, our program offices, programs, and initiatives. Um, they've been very successful for both our seasoned and our new employees. Um, and so, again, as I mentioned, we have past PIH fundamental sessions um, recorded so that you could go back and you can hear the recording as well as get the PowerPoint, um, and if there were any questions and answers from those sessions, those are available as well, okay? Those will begin in January, All right? Next slide, please. Okay, so now our development programs. We're gonna look at our PIH professional development programs um, both those that are competitive and not competitive. These are for PIH employees only. Okay, next slide, please. PIH's signature program is EEP Self-Select Employee Enrichment Program. This allows employees to self-select a training. Some of the changes to requirements that we made this year is we've extended the program length to allow um, employees about six months window to complete training. So we will have um, the opportunity to complete trainings between April and October. Um, and so this allows, if once you apply for the program, you don't have to be in such a rush to finish the training. We understand priorities and things like that. So you have about a six month window to select a training within that time. Okay, um, 
Another change that we made this year is that employees are to request only one training. In the past, you've been able to request two um, by preference. Um, this year, only one training will be um, requested on an application. Uh, if things have, we do understand that things happen that are beyond your control, we will work with you um, if that is the case, but one training per an employee. Um, another thing that we uh, changed this year is that employees can submit a request for individual training and be included in a group. So I know the last few years we added the group and um, the individual and it was priority based. And so some people were not able to take an individual one, they were in a group. This year you are allowed to take the um, uh, individual one, you can uh, apply for an individual one, but also be included in a group. Okay. Next slide, please. So you can see some of our accomplishments from uh, of this program for last year. We received um, 113 applications. We had 105 eligible applications in two rounds last year. We did around one and around two. Um, we trained 114 employees through EEP um, with spending about $93,000. Okay. So, again, our focus um, this year is the office hours, um, some of those office hour sessions that I mentioned. Um, we will include market research on the application this year. Um, in the previous years, We've been trying to mirror the application as close to uh, the 182 so that once you are prepared, all the work that you have to do is up front and you can just once your application has been approved and you get the go ahead, you can go ahead and submit that 182 and all the information that is required on a 182. We've already did that as part of this program. So that is another thing we're adding this year. Um, and then again, employees can apply for an individual training and be included in a group training. Okay, um, next slide, please. Okay, here is a snapshot of um, some of the trainings that were funded through the program last year. Um, this was a resource that we used last year when we rolled out the training plan. People really enjoyed having this information to kind of get ideas and to see um, some of the trainings that have been approved. Um, so we just wanted to uh, continue with that and let you see some of the training titles that were approved last year. Okay, next slide, please. Okay, EEP shadowing. Um, this is currently under construction and there will be more information later this fiscal year if this program will be offered. Okay, next slide, please. Our professional development program, this is our admin professional program that is offered to employees GS5 through 11 that are in the um, admin professional series. This program was revamped in FY21 and is still going strong. Um, some of the components of this program include participants having an IDP, developing one and having one on file. Um, completing a personality type test, um, having a coach, and being able to participate in some training. Okay, next slide, please. These are some of the areas of training that participants were able to take. Okay, next slide, please. Um, as I stated, this program is still going strong. Um, in FY22, we had four participants to transition out of the program after being promoted into professional um, positions. Some include field correspondence coordinator, field correspondence analyst, and program analyst. Um, we were also able to, we had two people um, that were accepted and attended a preparing to lead program. Um, on being a leader um, as they per, uh, progress in their careers. So they are actually almost done in that program. So we are very excited that they had that opportunity. Um, 
we also were able to provide additional opportunities to the participants through our brown bag series. Um, this helped them to develop skills, strategies, and tools to assist them in their professional journey. The inaugural event was a networking opportunity that allowed for two of the graduates of the program to come back and exchange information on their personal journey into the professional uh, position. We also provided best practices. They provided, excuse me, best practices, lessons learned, and advice to their peers um, that are striving to be promoted outside of the administrative field. Uh, participants also receive both internal and external resources to assist them in strengthening their resumes, identifying career paths, and communi communicating their qualifications. Okay, this year our focus is um, to have a mentoring program between our PDP participants and our MDP alum. Um, we also are going to have PDP pulse checks, which are um, check-ins with the PIH training leadership to revisit their goals and their development plans. As I mentioned before, um, all participants of this program have an IDP on file. And so uh, um, this was launched again, well, revamped, excuse me, in uh, 2021. And so we just want to do a pulse check, see are they still on the on same track, have some of their goals changed, and so that's what we will be focusing on this year. Okay, next slide, please. Okay, our MDP alum. Our MDP alum, um, this is for our PIH employees that have successfully graduated HUD's MDP program. Um, through this program, we hold quarterly events to exchange information, challenges, experiences, and goals to develop strengths and encourage collaboration. Uh, we held our first MDP, um, excuse me, our first leadership panel as a networking opportunity um, with this group this year. And we invited PIH leaders to come and speak on their professional journey into a supervisory role. Um, they also gave their best practices, lessons learned, and provided advice to counsel, <clears throat> excuse me, um, to counsel participants as they strive, uh, as they strive to progress to their pro professional careers. Okay, so here are some of the criteria for this program. Um, through the program, again, this is for our MDP alum, and so they received um, a strengths assessment test as well. Uh, they were matched up with coaches, and then the networking. Um, Part that I explained, which we hold quarterly. Okay, next such next slide, please. Okay, um, through this program, they also um they are also uh, granted training different training opportunities. Okay, next slide, please. Oh, I'm sorry. Can you go back one? <laughs> So on the training, thank you. Um, this year, so they do, they are afforded training opportunities. This year, these are some of the areas in which we will focus on um, the training based on the course, based on the ECQs. Okay, next slide, please. Okay, so some of our accomplishments um, with this program this year is that we had one that transitioned out of the program and was um, promoted into a supervisory position. We had two PIH employees that successfully graduated from HUD's MDP program, and they joined us in the MDP um, alum program. And then we launched PIH's first MDP alum book club. Um, and so we currently have eight uh, participants in the program. Our focus this year will be continuing to um, our book club. The, the first session we had at the beginning of this fiscal year was very, very um, successful. And so we're already looking forward to finishing up the current book and to selecting another one. Um, also, our mentorship between the um, MDP alum and our PDP. Okay, next slide, please. 
Okay, our MDP program, this is, the MDP program is HUD's program in which we uh, collaborate with other departments within HUD for this program. This is a competitive program. Last year, we had 18 PIH staff to apply and five were selected, okay? So here are some components of this program. Um, next slide, please. Here are some more um, components of the program. This is a 12-month program. Again, this is competitive. Uh, as you see, as I said, 18 applied and only five selected. So this is um, very competitive, okay? And next slide, please. Okay, so our accomplishments um, last year, we had, well, this spring, excuse me, we had um, six PIH employees that graduated um, from the 2022 cohort. And then we had five um, PIH employees that were selected to represent PIH in the 2023 cohort. So this year, what we want to do in PIH is to engage our 2023 cohort um, with the PIH alum because they've gone through the process. So we want to add that support and that encouragement um, to them uh, while they go through this rigorous program. Okay. All right, next slide, please. Okay, so we have talked about a plethora of <laughs> programs. Um, and so we have a new program. This new program is for our non-supervisory GS 14 and 15. This is to um, provide some support, to provide opportunities and development um, to those senior staff of um, PIH that are not in the supervisory role. So through this program, we will be disseminating opportunities, um, both internal and external. Uh, again, this is non-competitive. So if you are a non-supervisory GS 14 and 15, um, you will be receiving these opportunities. Um, and then it's up to you whether you wanna take advantage of them. Um, through surveys and um, through our surveys, these are some of the topics that have been um, identified that uh, employees within this uh, area want to have more training on. So these are some of the trainings that we plan on offering to you all. Um, again, we will still be disseminating um, information. I'll talk about another resource um, that is not HUD, but that is available to you um, a little later, okay? Um, next slide, please. Okay, our leadership better the best. This is for our PIH supervisors and managers. And so this program, we um, look at two different things. There's two different focal points on this training. I mean, on this program. The first one is that um, by regulation, supervisors are to have trainings um, and to have trainings every three years. Um, and then if you're a new supervisor, the first year of your appointment. So we track this information to make sure that PIH is in compliant. And then we provide um, trainings to make sure that our that we are training our, um, our leadership. So HUD does provide um, trainings for all of HUD, but as we know with HUD trainings, they fill up. So PIH, um, we do invest and make additional sessions for our um, leaders to take these trainings and to be compliant. Um, we also offer um, development trainings that align with the ECQs. Um, so this year, in addition to the new supervisory training and then the mandatory refresher training, um, here are some other trainings that we plan on um, offering to the to some supervisors. Some we have already offered early this uh, physical year, but these are some more that we are going to continue to offer. Okay, next slide, please. All right, and then our um, senior executive um, through this program, this is for our um, PIH senior executives. And so 
through this program, we identify um, at least one class, one training um, for them to take each year. And so we will again do that this year and make sure that um, you know we're continuing to invest in all of our PIH staff. As you see, um, we have again a variety of PIH uh, development programs that touches um, all of our staff. Okay. Next slide, please. Okay. So I know I've gone through a lot. <laughs> so putting together, looking at everything that uh, PIH training is doing this year, uh, we wanted to kind of show you our timeline, right? So what is going on? When is when should we expect things? And so um, we're still in first quarter. So first quarter, we are um, having this training plan. So before today's session, um, the training plan was presented to our PIH leadership. Um, and so now we're having the session where we're presenting it to you all. We will be handing out the um, training plan. So everybody will get a copy of the training plan. Um, we will have our another learning session, as I mentioned, that will be in December. Um, PIH group training, we have started just a few. And again, we're um, gearing up so that we can roll out some more after the holidays. Um, and so some of the things that you can be doing now um, is market research and thinking about if you're interested in our EEP program, what are some, what is a training that you want to take, right? So that's something that you can start doing now um, because in quarter two, we plan to announce the EEP program. Um, again, PIH fundamentals, that will start in January. Um, we'll have the learning session for EEP as well. And then we'll resurvey. We've surveyed um, PIH for the trainings now, and we know priorities change, things change. So we look at, we're planning to resurvey again. Um, and then traditionally, in the second quarter, HUD's MDP program is announced. Um, again, that is when it's traditionally announced. It may be in second quarter, it may be a little bit later. Um, in third quarter, we will continue having our learning sessions, um, the office hours, and we will work with our programs, um, our training program training coordinators on the budget re um, reconciliation to make sure that we're spending our funds and we're not waiting until fourth quarter, okay? Um, and then in fourth quarter, here are some other things that we are looking to do. One thing that I do want to highlight and to mention is that um, we have extended the time for trainings to be completed. So previously, all trainings had to be completed within the first few weeks in September. We have changed that out now until October. And so you still need to get in the training request this fiscal year, but you can get in training requests and um, have a training early next fiscal year. So I, fiscal year. So I did want to um, let everyone know that is a change that we have done um, this year. And so more information you'll have, uh, we'll definitely be, be uh, reminding you of that date as well as the last date to submit the 182, but wanted to let you know that you will have um, opportunities to take trainings in um, the first part of next fiscal year, dependent on your program's budget. Okay, next slide, please. Okay, so we've talked about a lot that the training team does. And so when you're looking and need a contact, who do I go to? I'm interested in this program. I'm interested, you know, I need help with um, training. Who do I go to? So this is the training team. We're small, but we're mighty. Um, and so if you need to reach out, um, please definitely reach out. Um, this is, this tells you uh, the program training liaisons for all the program offices but then also all of the program leads. So if you, again, if you have questions on any of the development programs, please definitely reach out. Okay. Next slide, please. Okay, so now we talked about um, what PIH offers. So I thought it was very important that 
we um, show what HUD offers, because sometimes I think we get confused of, is this HUD or is this PIH, right? So um, please make sure that you are on the HUD listserv. Um, if you are not, please send an email to HUDLearn at, at HUD.gov so that you can get on that listserv so that you can um, get opportunities, not only from PIH, but you also know the opportunities that HUD is offering, okay? So next slide, please. Okay, so within HUD Learn, as I mentioned, they send out um, group trainings. And so those are sent to all of HUD. So first come, first serve. Um, another, resource if you're looking for modules um, books audio books um, HUD virtual university is a great resource um, we also have Percipio, which is um that is one of that is part of uh, hvu but it is on a larger scale that we can um, use uh, resources. So I will add that I don't have that on today's PowerPoint, but I will add that uh, resource, which is Percipio. It has um, some of the same resources that HUD Virtual University has, but Percipio, uh, right now they're working on some searching features with, within HVU. So Percipio allows you to, um, to search a wider, uh, a much wider, uh, array of things. So not only do they have the training modules, the books, the audio books, um, there's also videos and things on Precipio. So, and that is connected with Encompass. Um, and so again, I will add that before that before the um, PowerPoint comes out, I will add that link as well. And so when you're taking training modules, um, whether it's in HBU, whether it's in Precipio, once you complete those modules, those books, they will be on your transcript, okay? All right, next slide, please. All right, so TEI, so this is a resource that is available to all of HUD's senior executives and GS 14s and 15s, both supervisory and non-supervisory. So, if you fall into that category, you automatically have access to TEI. TEI is another um, resource that provides trainings, um, webcasts, there's um, a coaching program, different things. And so here is the access you can access here to sign up um, and to get into TEI if you're not already. Okay. Um, Next slide, please. All right, thank you everyone. Again, I know this was a lot of information. So thank you um, for joining us today. And so please join us, um, the training team on December 13th, as we go over more of the training requirements and procedures. So today was our plan to show you this is what is available. This is what we have, um, you know, this is what is available to you. These are some of the things that we uh, put out for this year, but our actual um, training kickoff on December 13th, we'll talk about more of the requirements and the procedures. So it'll get into more of the 182s, the market research, the justification, things like that. That's what our December 13th session will be, okay? Um, we will be offering two sessions of that similar to how we're doing today. And so you only need to um, attend one session. You don't need to attend both. They're going to be the same information. So thank you again for joining us today. And so I'll look, I saw a few um, chats come in. Well, we're uh Taking a look at the chat questions, if you would like to ask a question verbally, please click the raise hand icon, which is located to the right of your screen just above the chat panel. You will hear a tone when your line is unmuted, at which time please state your name and ask your question. If you're not using WebEx audio, you may press pound two on your telephone keypad to join the queue. And you may also continue to submit written questions through chat to all panelists.
Thank you, Candace. Okay, so we have some questions. So the first one, a high percentage of HUD employees are eligible or will be eligible for retirement. Accordingly, there's significant demand for retirement classes. Um, will such courses be offered and allowed as EEP courses? So the answer to that is no, and that is because we offer a significant amount of retirement classes through PIH group training, as well as HUD, um, HUD Learn provides those courses. Um, so each year we have provided at least four, four opportunities, if not more, on retirement. Um, and so as, as um, indicated in the plan, that is another topic that we will be offering this year. So that is not um, allowed under EEP. EEP is for you to self-select courses that you do not have um, an opportunity to take. Uh, and so if you are interested in that retirement, if you have questions about that, if you have not been able to get in classes, please reach out to me, okay? Um, next, next question, will the slide deck, yep, it will be um, emailed to everybody. Uh, with membership into and training from Toastmasters Group, which develops communication, and leadership skills. Um, I think the question is being at, oh, can you apply as the training program? Okay, so I think the question is asking, can you use a 182 to apply to the training program? If that's your question, if you could maybe send us another one or get on the line just so that I can make sure I'm answering your question correctly about Toastmasters. Um, but I, I think you're asking if it can, if you can apply using a 182. So you would have to send me the information and we would have to look at it to see if it um, meets the criteria for a 182. Um, if not, there may be no other avenues in which you may be able to apply for the program. But we have, again, I have to see that information. Okay, will you be able to send notices of upcoming training opportunities with longer notice? Um, usually within two weeks, but it will be helpful. We have them at least a month in advance since our calendars fill up. Yes, so that is one of our um, goals is to send things as soon as we can. Um, sometimes it is crunch, so I do apologize for that, but we are definitely working on trying to send them out um, in longer period of time. Um, someone else said TEI has really good um, trainings and sessions. Okay. Yes, the 2 p.m. session is a repeat of this session. Um, okay. Someone else said we're in the <clears throat> excuse me we're in the process of scheduling a group training. Is this our one training for FY22 and is there a dollar limit for group trainings? Um, so for SF182, uh, group trainings cannot exceed 25,000. Um, but if you have more questions on your group training, please um, send them to me. Please contact me directly and we can talk offline about, about your group training. Um, someone asked, where do we register for the trainings? So the group train, the PIH group trainings, um, we send a flyer through your program training coordinators. And in that flyer for each session, uh, for each course over to the right, it tells you where to register and you can register there um, for the classes, well, requested um, all classes need supervisory approval. So not until your supervisor has approved it, um, you're not registered, you're just request, you have just requested it. Um, HUD Learn, when they send their information, they send it in a flyer as well. And then you have to open the flyer and they tell you where to register um, for the different classes. Um, how can we get to the HUD virtual website? So HVU, if that is what um, this question is about, 
that is in Encompass. So when you log into your Encompass, you can go to um, HVU, which is HUD vir Virtual University. Okay, another, another question about announcing early. So, yep. Um, yes, this is recorded. Um, someone else said, could you consider having more trainings that are half day sessions rather than multiple um, eight hours, three days consecutively It's often difficult to leave our work responsibilities for a long period of time. Um, we actually did a survey uh, last year, I believe once we did kind of roll out and we mixed how we were doing. Um, and so that may be something we can look into again of doing a survey to to get the pulse. Um, when, when we did that survey last year, it was kind of mixed that some people didn't really mind um, having the half days uh, opposed to having the full days. So um, thank you for that comment. We can look at doing another pulse check on that. Okay. All right. If there are there any questions, Candace, on the line? Not at this time. Okay. All right. Thank you so much, everybody. Enjoy the rest of your day. That concludes our conference. Thank you for using event services. You may now disconnect.